Okay, so here I have a set of um, carburetors, two carburetors off of a 97 Suzuki GS 500E. Um, these are the carburetors that I, uh, the same, they fit the same year for 95 to 98, I believe. I might be a little bit wrong on that. It's not my, uh, it's not my motorcycle, but these run okay. The guy just wanted me to go through them, and make sure they're running. Um, make sure they're running better. As you can see, they're a little bit dirty. Got some of that Hawaiian red dirt on it. But um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go through, clean them, and uh, sink them. Check, make sure that the uh, both of the idle screws are screwed down the same way. Um, I've worked on one of these, or I think two of these, in the past, where I thought it was a uh, um, I thought it was a carburetor issue, but it ended up being the, the idle would be off. The idle would be low. Uh, it would be normal at, on a cold start. And then after it warmed up, it, the idle would raise up to about 3,000 RPM. And what would, what I found out, um, and a lot of troubleshooting, I couldn't figure it out. And then finally I found out that the uh, if you if you put gasket maker between the little intake manifold boots that fit on this side of the carburetors, they go between the carburetors and the engine. Um, if you put the mega gasket silicone stuff on, um, you probably want to do black because it wouldn't stand out as much as the uh, the other color stuff. I don't it, I don't think it really gets hot enough to matter what which, which color you use. So, um, but the the uh, there's a basically there's a tiny gap between the intake manifold boots and um, and the head and what that what happens with that gap is since uh, since warm air is less dense than cold air the warm air will seep in the gap and when it seeps in the gap it changes the idle but it's the engine's got to be hot it's got to be sucking in warm air or it's uh, the engine's got to be hot for it to do that so um, you put the make a gasket stuff on and it runs great I, I've done it twice and I haven't seen any problems with uh, with it but you do have to pull the carburetors off and the and the little intake manifold boots and then put it between not on this side but on the engine side in the little gap and also if, if yours are cracked I mean, if you're looking at them and you take them off and they have a lot of cracks because they're uh, they're rubber and they're old then that would also cause the same problem but but these I'm just gonna go through these like I said there's nothing wrong with them they run they idle great um, but the guy just wanted me to go through them, <clears throat> so I'm gonna check the uh, the idle, make sure that the um, the two carburetors are synced together. Make sure they have the uh, the same. Make sure they're mixing the same amount of air and fuel, and uh, the tools I'm gonna use. So I, I guess I, I guess this is gonna work. This is I use this on all the other carburetors. It's a little modified screwdriver. I I shave down the little edge that that sticks out here. And uh, that way you can slide it down the little shaft that the jets are in. If this is designed like that, these are just regular Makuni carburetors. So I'm sure that it's probably like most of the other Makuni carburetors. And then T-handle screwdriver. The uh, these are Japanese carburetors. So the uh, I forget the actual um, what the name of the bit is, but it's a Japanese style bit um, for the Phillips. This works fine. I've never stripped out. I've done probably more than 50 carburetors. I've never stripped out a screw. Even if it was already stripped out, I managed to get it off um, using this Craftsman T-handle screwdriver. It's well, it's regular. It's both this and a T-handle, so you can snap it, um, snap it out, snap it in. So you can you can you can push. You can really push down while you. Uh, but. Um, People have warmed me, which I thought it was kind of funny when they warned me, like, oh, you're going to strip it out. <laughs> like, well, you're going to strip it out if you don't know what you're doing. Um, if I've never stripped it out using this, um, you have to put a pretty good bit of pressure down and push down, and then the T-handle lets you turn. So, lets you turn it. And then the most important thing is this. I have this uh, guitar string. This is a high E string. Uh, this is a 10 gauge, but you can use... I mean, if you're if you're working on smaller carburetors, you should get like the nine gauge, which would say 0.09, I think, or 0.009, I forget. I think it's just 0.09, 
on the on the packet. You can go buy any guitar store and you can buy a single guitar string if you don't want to spend the four dollars on a cheap set of strings and a you know, single guitar string is like a dollar. So you, you buy one, it's a dollar tool, very well worth it. Uh, you just stick it through the jets. Um, and you're not scratching the side, you stick it through once and if the, if the carburetors are plugged, if the jets are plugged, then this will clean them out. So, um, so yeah, stick that in, swirl it around. Um, I usually spray the, spray the jet with carburetor, I'll go over that later. But the first thing that you're going to want to do is take these off. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I just loosen this diaphragm cap. Um, you want to try to keep it clean on the inside whenever you take these off. So I have my hand on the on the cap while I'm taking these screws up because there's a spring underneath this cap that's going to push up on it. So let's put the put this uh, the screws somewhere. Lift up carefully because sometimes the diaphragm on the other one the diaphragm kind of stuck a little bit to the to the cap. You don't want to tear it. If these tear, they're useless. Okay. So I get this out. It's out with a spring. Um, take the spring out of the diaphragm cap because I'm gonna put the uh, the diaphragm inside this inside this cap. But the, the way I'm taking this out is sometimes when you open these up, they're gonna be like this they're going to be stuck inside here um, so the way I take these out is I usually just stick my pinky on inside the uh, inside the center and I pull up so that way I'm not pulling on the diaphragm itself I'm just pulling on straight up the middle and this has some build up on it actually I take this needle out this little plastic washer that sits on top of the needle. And there's a little plastic washer that goes underneath the needle. Did not mean to drop that. And I'm just setting it upside down back inside that diaphragm cap. It's the way that it's supposed to go. This most likely is a needle from like a dyno jet kit. I think these have been jetted. They're usually the dyno jets uh, kits come with these little universal these little C clips that snap around the top of the the needle. Um, you can see it. I don't know if you can. I don't know if the picture is clear enough, but it's, this is just a C clip that snaps around the top. You don't want to take this off. Um, it's it's set in place, and there's actually another little washer with these. These don't look stock. I'm pretty sure these are aftermarket. Usually, they're. Um, if I would have known this, I would have had a regular one out to show. But and it'll have this little tiny washer on top of the C clip. Um, yeah, so just set this stuff out of the way, somewhere where it's safe. So you don't want to damage the tip of that. Okay. So now the diaphragms are out of the way. You want to keep those away. Like I said, you want to keep those away from the carburetor cleaner. This stuff will tear up diaphragms. Fuel getting on them will, will tear them up. They're they're not made to be around fuel, even though they're on the other side of the carburetors. Okay, now both of the diaphragms are off, out of the way, and I can start taking these uh, these float balls off. These only have two screws, one on each side. Um, some have four all the way around. Some I've actually seen with three. Um, but so I'm just using the T-handle screwdriver, pushing down and turning. And then once it loosens, you can use a regular screwdriver on it if it's easier than that. And a T handle. So So you want to be careful when taking these out. 
There's a little rubber o-ring that holds it in. And the fact that they're a little hard to get out is, is pretty good. You don't want to pry them out with anything. Okay. Now I have a little jet in here. I'm gonna pop this guy out. You want to be careful with these jets. They're very, they're very brittle. They're brass, so they, um, they're very easy to strip out. If yours is stuck, then don't try to muscle it. Don't try to force it out because it's it's not steel. It's not it's not as tough as steel. It's brass, so it's really soft. So those two are loose. And you should be able to look through them and see light. Um, so right now, all I'm doing is have the guitar string. I'm just going to push it through. Fits through easily. Just spin it around. It doesn't, it doesn't scratch the inside of the jet. It doesn't harm the inside of the jet. If anything, it would probably just, well, like leave a little tiny scratch, but it's uh, it's never enough to hurt performance. Because all I'm doing is I just spread carburetor cleaner on, cleaner on it, stuck it in, I stuck the, uh, just like threading a needle, just put the, uh, put the jet through the guitar string, and then just blow it out. So I have a little com can of compressed air here too. If you want to use that. Whenever you're done, you should just be able to look through it and see light on the other side. It should be a full complete circle. So what I'm doing here is I have the idle jet. I'm just going to thread the guitar string through it, which is, you know, this this string just barely fits through. Um, fits through the idle jet or the pilot jet whatever you want to call it it's called both but I just stick it through spin it around spray it with some carburetor cleaner just a little bit stick it through again spin it around And just blow it. And you should be able to look through it and see a clean hole. If you want to use that little can of compressed air here too. It's really useful for spraying through. So you should be able to look through and see a perfectly round hole. So, um, so now these two jets are clean. I can set these to the side. And the needle jet or the main jet um, really you don't have to clean that that much I mean I I, I used I still use the guitar string just because I mean you, if you think about as the you know, when, whenever you spray it of course I, I spray it with air you think about it whenever you spray it with the carburetor cleaner and then you stick the uh, you stick the string through the jet if you're pushing on it with the side of your thumb and you kind of roll it, you can think about what the string is doing inside of the uh, inside of the jet. It's just kind of pushing against the side and and going to uh, kind of scraping it, I guess. But it's scraping it with the side of the string. It's not scraping it with something that's that's sharp and blunt. It's scraping it with you know with just the side of the string. So it's not scratching it. It's just opening up back to what it's supposed to be you know getting off any of the gunk off the side of the walls so 
that one just rolled back under the carburetors. Right there. Okay, now if you can get these off, do these come off? There's usually a little screen on the bottom of this. This one doesn't have a screen. So other car other carburetors will have a little screen on the bottom and sometimes it gets gunked up with uh if your fuel starts to separate because you're not riding the motorcycle enough and um the fuel kind of gets gummy so whenever it hits that little mesh screen on the on the underside of this it'll uh it'll kind of tend to gunk it up you just it's a screen so you can just spray it with carburetor cleaner it's fine what you'll want to do with this idle air adjustment is um, count in half turns like screw down so that's that's half one half two half three well half okay so three and three quarters so this one was three and three quarter turns to where I bottom out in the bottom because what you're doing is you're tightening it because you want to use that as a reference whenever you put the strings back in. So that one was three and a quarter. Sorry, three and three quarter. And this one, let's see what it is. So it's stuck. Half one, half two, half three three and one quarter okay so this one was three and one quarter this one was three and three quarter if you don't have the uh, the measurements for it and what these are supposed to be set at which are actually gonna change depending on your elevation but I mean as long as you're not 10,000 feet above sea level it doesn't make that much of a difference if you're 10,000 feet above sea level then there's a slightly different adjustment um, which it should say in your book um, but you can usually Google GS 500. So the factory setting on these, um, according to Google, which I don't have a book, but according to Google, it's three turns out. Um, these have been jetted. And the reason I know that is because it's got the dyno jet, um, or not really dyno jet, but the aftermarket jet um, needles. Aftermarket needles. So these with the C clip are the aftermarket type. Um, so you can adjust them, you can use them on multiple applications, and it'll say in the instructions which which groove to put them in. Um, so, um, considering this one was three and three quarters, and this one was three and one quarter, the best thing I can do right now, um, without putting them on the bike and seeing how it runs, is, is unscrew, well, I'm going to take them out and clean them, but whenever I put them back in, I want to tighten them all the way down just to where, and I don't want to over tighten them, I just want to get it to where it stops. Um, get these out. But the, uh, considering these have been jetted, it's going to go, you're going to go by the recommendations from the, um, what they say whenever it was jetted. Uh, and then you know if you drive it around and when you accelerate if it feels like it's bogging then turn it down um, tighten it a you know a, a quarter turn or a half turn and then ride it around see how it does and then you know loosen it or uh, you know a quarter turn or a half turn from where it was but you do want to keep these two the same um, you don't want to have one where it's three and three quarters like this one was and the other one where it's three and one quarters three and one quarter So, um, one thing you want to you want to look at on this, uh, other types of carburetors, you'll have an O-ring or two two O-rings around around this around this little around this little uh, this little shaft. This is the idle air screw adjustment. And um, as far as I know, every bike from the manufacturer comes with uh, it's there's a cap from the um, I guess it's just called the EPA cap environmental protection agency they put it over so nobody can adjust their air fuel ratio um, they want these to burn clean from the or as clean as they can from the from the manufacturer 
But this one, you want to look and make sure the tip's not broken off. Something's not happened to it. If it is broken off, then get another one. Um, I'm going to put this one back in. I'm going to tighten this one down. Since this one was three and three quarters, and this one was three and one quarter, then I'm going to put them both. I'm going to screw them all the way down. Wait. Yeah. Screw it all the way down. And whenever it stops, I'm not going to force it. I'm going to let it stop. Um, so now, okay, it's there. So now I'm going to count in half turns again. So that's half, one, half, two, half, three. Okay, and, and then one more half turn. Three and a half, and that way there, they're just they're about the same. There's also a spring underneath here, which I didn't. The spring didn't come out with the other one. Um, actually, I'm gonna have to pull it out again to see if there actually is a spring like there should be in it. Which it's probably there probably is. It's probably just didn't come out with the with the screw when I pulled it when I pulled it out. But the spring puts pressure on this, so it doesn't. You know, there, this one has a spring. The spring puts pressure on it, so that it doesn't. Uh, what do you call it? So that it doesn't um, come loose. So that you're not putting Loctite on it, where it's hard to get out. You just have a spring on it that's putting just enough pressure on the threads to where, when you tighten it to where it's supposed to be, it'll most likely stay where it is. So in this one, you look at the tip of the needle on the on the screw it's fine so put this back in tighten it all the way to the bottom and like I said you don't want to over tighten this so you just want like whenever you're tightening it down you want it to stop where it is which is there and then count again three and a half turns just like this one half one half two half three half okay and the screw heads may not be facing the same direction like this one you can't tell but this one's facing it's, it's turned more like this so it's it's kind of sideways and this one's almost almost uh, level, that's almost straight. Um, I'm going to pull this one out again and make sure there's a little spring underneath it, like there should be. Oh, there is this time. <laughs> it's it's on the end. Okay, yeah, so there is a spring on this one. It just, it just decided to stay on that time when I pulled it out. So, Tighten all the way down. And the reason, like I said, the reason I'm going to three and a half turns instead of three turns, like the factory, like the met, well, like the uh, like the all-knowing Google said. Um, one, half, two, half, three, half. So the reason that I'm going to three and a half is, like I said earlier, whenever you put in a, um, a jet kit, it'll tell you everything to do. It'll you know, you'll um, drill out these a little bit more. It just depends on what it says to do. It can tell you to drill out the bottom of this a little bit more, um, adjust the air fuel ratio to, you know, it'll say turn it a half turn out or three quarter turns out, or, you know, it, it'll tell you how to adjust it. So after you put a jet kit in, you don't go by the factory adjustments anymore you go by the jet kit adjustments and if you're buying this off of somebody else you want to look at okay what is it you know does it have a needle like this or does it have another one which is not an aftermarket one which is a stock one which um, those don't have these little c-clips it's it's got the it's kind of built into um, um, how do I explain it it, the way when it's molded 
there's a lip here instead of a C clip. So, I mean, it's possible that these are stock, but I've never seen stock ones that had a C clip on it and that had these little grooves to where you can adjust it individually. These are most likely um, the needles that came with a rejetting kit. So, so that's adjusted the way it's supposed to be. What I've done with carburetors before, which works out really well, uh, completely disassemble these springs, everything. Um, make sure everything rubber or plastic is gone, and then you get one of those big paint can size. Uh, what are those? Carburetor cleaner buckets. It's got a little little basket inside, and you would put each carburetor inside the bucket, and you drop it in. And you can just let it sit, but um, what I prefer to do, and which makes it it makes them look so clean, and it's all you uh, it's all you did, is you put this whole carburetor assembly right um, I'll say again with all the plastic and all the rubber out of it because I mean that carburetor cleaner will just eat through that stuff um, you'll put it in the basket drop it in and I've, I've got a, a, a bench grinder before and I've set it on top of the uh, the can and then just let that run <laughs> and it vibrates the whole thing shakes the can so instead of it it shakes the can with the carburetor and everything inside of it. So instead of it just um, just shaking it clean, or instead of it just um, soaking in it to make it clean, it shakes it. It vibrates everything. So all these little um, particles kind of get shaken off, shaken loose. And it, you know when you take it out, it looks amazing. It looks incredible. You you, you do it. If you, say if you have a dual carburetor set up or a four carburetor set up, do it to one. After you you know just had the other one just sitting in there. And you compare the difference between the two. I mean, the outside of it will look like this. It'll look completely clean um, compared to the outside of the other one, which would probably look like this, maybe a little bit cleaner. But there's a huge difference, a huge difference. It looks incredible. So um, these are pretty good. I mean, you, it, the ones that are sitting, they'll have like uh, you, you'll have rust build up inside, like inside the float bowl where it sits. You know, and these are these are side draft, so um, you'll have rust build up or some kind of a gummy build up from the fuel if it's old fuel, which is why you want to clean these out. I'm not going to um, bother with taking out the drain plug on these because there's no build up around them. So there's no build up around them, but there would be build up um, inside of here if it was a. So if you're if you're cleaning carburetors that have been sitting for a while, that um, obviously you want to be you, you want to be running good. You don't want the fuel to soften up some extra gunk that's inside. I mean these are pretty clean when you look inside of them. That's why I'm not gonna bother with cleaning them. But usually I'll take a Q-tip or something and I'll spray the carburetor cleaner on the on the Q-tip or I'll spray the carburetor cleaner inside the float bowl. And then again, have the diaphragms out of the way, far away. You don't want fuel on the diaphragms anywhere around them. Um, but spray, scrub the inside with the Q-tips and, and uh, spray it some more, scrub the inside with the Q-tips and just keep doing that until it looks like this, until it looks like it's supposed to. Because what happens is if you have the little, um, the little rust build up inside or if you have the gummy build up, then that's going to keep it from, um, it's going to keep it from running good over a long term because the fuel is going to soften up that gunk that's, that's built up inside there or built up inside the float bowl. Since these are side draft, the fuel kind of sits level, oh, upside down, fuel kind of sits level and it, it sits inside of here. So um, side draft carburetors also you have to look at the gaskets more because it does hold fuel inside. So these didn't leak before. Um, I doubt they'll leak again, but if you want, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to uh, change out the gasket set whenever you do the whenever you do the carburetors. So um, you can get a flashlight if you don't have enough light around you, and look through this. Hold the carburetors like I'm holding them right now, but you'll look through them like that, where where you're looking down the uh, the inlets where the air goes in, and then just look at the Look at the butterflies on the on the bottom side and see if you can see 
the same amount of light. You'll see like a little thumbnail bit of light. So then you'll you'll compare you'll compare this one. You know, you look at the little sliver. Um, if you don't have um, feeler gauge like I do, look at the little sliver and you compare this one and look how it is. And then you compare it to this one and then you look at how it is. Just to make sure that uh, that they're both letting the right amount of air in. Because these are mechanical, so they they let the right amount, of, they let the same amount of air in that they do fuel. Um, not the same amount. They're they're built. Uh, ignore that. They don't let the same amount of. Um, they're built to only allow a certain amount of fuel in to match the amount of air that's going in. And uh, from here, since like I said, since the uh, the diaphragms are out of the way, they're far away, so it can't get any over. Um, overspray stuff from the carburetor cleaner on it. Spray some carburetor cleaner in. I don't know why I did that. Pressure, I guess. But here I'm just my little can of carburetor cleaner I'm spraying it inside the um, inside these little mini inside these little um, ports on this side so that I can clean them and make sure they're they're good that one I can't get anything to go in here it goes. So if you can't get it to go in, just kind of keep poking it until it finally goes in. Um, you might have a little bit of buildup. It's not working like it's supposed to. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. So I'm just I got the guitar string. I'm just I just poke it in once, swirl it around. I've already sprayed it with carburetor cleaner. And then I switch over to this one, poke it in, swirl it around. It should go in probably about a half inch or so. And then you'll fill it bottom out. Um, but it, at first you'll stick it in and maybe it'll go in a, um, an eighth of an inch and just kind of keep um, kind of keep kind of poking down at it until it finally gives and goes in uh, so these were running and they actually had you know whenever you spray through these holes you should see carburetor cleaner coming coming out the uh, the other side the float bowl side should drip out. Um, if it's not, then you have a blockage somewhere on the inside. Um, if it's just overflowing out of these little ports. And then, yeah, just do the same thing from, from this side. There's little passageways inside of these carburetors that the fuel goes through, and you want it to go through um, both sides evenly. I mean, if you know, if there are little restrictions or stuff, you know, on, on each side. No, it's not going to do anything. It's the needle, needle jet hole. So, they're nice and clean. And there's this little tiny hole here. Clean that a little bit. Make sure that's good. Alright, so these are good. These are ready to go back together. And like I said, you want to get all of the buildup out of the float bowl. If there's any buildup in the float bowl, this, these are clean. But you'll have like a gunky buildup. It'll either look like <laughs> tapioca pudding, or um, if you have rust in your tank, it'll be more of a reddish color. Or there's there's all different kinds. I've even seen green. I don't know what the green is. I've never been able to figure that out. Maybe aluminum oxidation, or I don't know. But you'll see the green, you'll see the tapioca pudding stuff, you'll see the red. Um, or the, otherwise, it'll just be like a regular white buildup. Um, and yeah, spray it with carburetor cleaner, scrub it with uh, scrub it with something. Q-tip works great. Just don't scrub it with anything sharp because you don't you, know, you don't you don't really want to scratch up the inside of the carburetors. But these are good. These are ready to go back together, and I'm going to put them back in 
the uh, the same order that I took them out. Um, these are the floats. You want to make sure that they are moving easily. I don't like these plastic ones. Um, but there's not really anything I can do about these to clean them. I don't want to take this little groove, groove part apart. I don't want to slip out the inside of it. But what you do want to make sure is that this is back on. There's like a little, there's little arms. And so far I've seen these in every carburetor, every set of carburetors, motorcycle carburetors that I've worked on. This little, I forget what this is called right now. Um, I'll post it up in a comment. Um, a little caption on this video but this always slips around bottom right there so it always sits on that little metal ledge like I have it so that it just kind of dangles and then whenever you slip it in Whenever you slip it in, you want to make sure that it goes inside. If you can see, see the hole that I put it in? The hole right there that it belongs in. Um, I'm trying to watch what I'm doing and make sure that I'm getting it on the camera too, which isn't too hard. Just push down on the Oh, that's going to be in the way of the... Okay, so I can't do that like that. I've got to put the jet in before. Because if I put the float assembly in, then it's going to be in the way of the jet. So I wouldn't be able to tighten up the jet. The idle jet. The main jet was fine. The needle jet. So, so this is clean. Let's clean this. This little... Yeah, put it in and then you don't want to over tighten this but you do want to get it a little bit snug so once it bottoms out yeah, the screwdriver keeps slipping off the head okay so once it hits the bottom you do want to get it a little bit you don't want it to be loose but you don't want it to be too tight, so you want to get it a little snug. Yeah, the screwdriver's in. And I do it to this other one. I'm just putting the needle jet back in because it was in the way of the, uh, or the float assembly was in the way of it, so I wouldn't have been able to put it in like it was. Okay, and you want to be careful when you're tightening these because the screwdriver kind of tends to slip off the, the head of the needle, or the um the uh, not needle jet, the idle idle jet or pilot jet. So some motorcycles will have three different sets of jets inside. Okay, now I can put this on. And is this the right one? Okay, and I want to make sure that this little I forget what it's called, but this little dangling thing that's in the middle goes inside that hole where the fuel comes into the carburetors and you can tell that there's the inlet, fuel inlet, um, fuel comes in through there and it controls how much fuel comes in based on how high the float is. So. This doesn't seem, this little rubber o-ring doesn't seem to be going in like I want it to hmm. so probably because it's dry I need some kind of something to lubricate it a little bit so it would slip in yeah
All right. Just got a little bit of motorcycle oil that I had in a, in a little bottle. I'm just going to touch my pinky and a little bit of it. It doesn't have to be your pinky. It could actually be any one of your fingers. Okay. So that should lubricate it enough to where it could kind of slip in. And wipe my finger off. that's in there like it's supposed to be do the same thing to this one Okay. These are a little tricky to put on. Sometimes I just wish I had smaller fingers. All right. I got that on like it's supposed to go. And it's hanging out through the bottom. I got the oil on the o ring. That slips in the hole like it's supposed to go. The o ring should pop in place. This one popped in place. This other one didn't pop in, it just kind of slipped in. But that's good. So that's in place. Now all I have left to do is to put this needle jet back. I always start threading them in with my hand if I can. Okay, so I'm just screwing this down until it stops and then turn it just a hair just to make it snug. It'll make it easier on the next guy that works on this. So, I put my little cap of oil away. Alright, so float ball size done. These are pretty clean, these are pretty easy to go through. Um, you want to watch while you're putting these back on. You notice this one and this one. The drain, the drains aren't are on each side. They're on the the other sides. So this one goes on this side because you want that drain to be easily accessible from the side of the bike. And this one is on this side. Tighten it down. A good thing to do is to is to not over tighten one side, or not over tighten, but not like tighten one side like you're gonna like you're done with it, and then move to the other side. But get one side kind of to where it's just barely holding, and then go and tighten the other side. And then you can tighten it down like it's supposed to be. Same thing to this one. Tighten it down to where it's just barely holding. And tighten this one down to where it's you know if you have if you have four screws, one on each side, then you'll tighten each one down so it's just barely holding. And then it's, it's easier on the gasket and it's easier to make your just to make sure everything is tightened up like it's supposed to be. 
if these screws are stuck whenever you're taking them apart whenever you're taking the carburetors apart um, take some vice grips put them on the side um, or uh, actually what I've done before is taken a drill bit at the vice grips because sometimes the float bowl will go around it'll kind of curve around the sides they're not like these, these are open, you can put vice grips on the sides of these but if you can't because the float bowl comes around too far out to the sides um, then what I've done before is I've taken a drill bit and matched it up to the size of these threads and started drilling from this side until I get down to the bottom of the head and then you'll just take a fatter drill bit and then you can snap the head right off and then you'll just get replacement screws. That's like a last resort if you can't get the uh, you can't get the screw up. So that's this side. Now all I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna stick a feeler gauge in here and see how the where's the smallest one. So, a little feeler gauge. I'm just using this as a, as a little reference. It doesn't go in that. It doesn't go in. It actually doesn't go into either one of those. I'll try the string. And it doesn't. But these idled to fi find the way they were before. Um, I'm not going to adjust these, but usually what I would do is I would I would open up this the main um, the main idle screw and then open it up enough to where I can get one guitar string in one side, and then I'll tighten up the other ones, the other carburetor, the other two, or the other three carburetors to where they all um, just barely will touch this guitar string and do that by adjusting this screw this is the butterfly adjustment screw um, these two carburetors are easy because the, uh, as you can see the throttle cable pulls on one on one side and the other one kind of rides off of it so when you adjust this screw it actually it adjusts this butterfly this screw doesn't adjust this one this screw only adjusts this one. Um, everything else looks good on this. I mean, it's it, it wasn't really a lot wrong with it. Um, ran great. So now I just have a plain t-shirt and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these slides, uh, this bottom is the slide and the diaphragm part is just, is just called the slide diaphragm. I'm going to get all this junk off, I don't know what this is, I'm just, this is just a clean shirt, there's not anything on it. Um, if these slides don't feel smooth, if they feel really rough, then I mean, what I've done before is I've taken a high grit sandpaper, like 2,000 grit sandpaper, and smoothed them out. Um, 2,000 grit is what you would use in like wet sanding a car, uh, something like that. But that way you would get these smooth again, so where they're they're flowing freely, like they're supposed to.
compressed air. It's nothing, not any kind of a chemical. So, and if you feel any oil on these diaphragms, and carefully, really carefully, try to get the oil off. This one's good. These need to be, um, you can't have any kind of a hole in these. If there's any kind of a hole, then it will, uh, it's going to change the air fuel ratio because when this, when this diaphragm moves up because of a vacuum that's created when this, when air is sucked in this hole in the bottom, the needle jet goes in the middle one, but on this, this hole in the side, it looks like a jet. Um, air is sucked through that and the, the vacuum from the engine sucks the air out of the top side of the diaphragm so it raises the whole slide and uh, when it raises the slide it raises the needle so pretty much what happens is the needle comes out of the, the needle jet and this is the needle slides out of the needle jet um, yeah and then more fuel goes in so it's I prefer carburetors I really like motorcycle carburetors I've heard that Volkswagen actually have a similar design but this one you see when you compare this one to this one so I just cleaned the one in this hand if I can hold it carefully I just cleaned the one in this hand and this one's still dirty I don't know what this stuff is, but it's really smooth, it's really gummy. So and then after this is clean, you put them back in. And uh, that's it. So, oh, I usually do this too. Almost forgot. Not just cleaning the uh, if the diaphragms are dirty, then you'll kind of also want to clean them. The inside these grooves where the turn this where it's facing the camera. I'm just cleaning inside of here best I can. So that it so that it slides like it's supposed to, slides freely. Actually, dirtier in there than. I saw before. Okay, a little bit better. Yeah. Now, putting this back together. If you wanted to let this dry, you can spray carburetor cleaner inside of here and uh, clean it out and then put it back together. So, right, so now what I'm doing, and I have the slide diaphragm again. And you want to put this back in the same order that it came out, which I have this needle and it's got this little washer on it. Again, I'm pretty sure these are aftermarket, um, so yours are going to look different. They're probably just going to be a needle, but you you'll want to look at it to see what um, like how yours is, how yours is set up while you're taking it apart. Just make sure you take a note of what order these came out in. But usually, most of the time, there's just this, and there's like a little plastic washer on top, which is just probably still the stock little plastic washer. They usually look like this. So, 
I'm dropping this in and don't poke the diaphragm. Would not be a good thing to stick the needle through the diaphragm. That's not where it goes. The other ones aren't going to be like this, but there's a little tiny washer. It goes on top of the C clip. So now I have this little, um, a little tiny washer sitting on top of the C-clip, and I'm going to put this. That the spring pushes this down so that it pushes against the uh, the needle, and the slide and everything. Um, it keeps it all down. So I'm going to stack this on top. Put the spring on top of that push it down and it's in place it's so hard to line those things up sometimes but now that you have it lined up you try to keep this as level as you can while you drop it back in and look through the intake so you can line up the needle with the hole that it's supposed to go in in the same way that you pulled it out as I have my pinky in the in the top in there it's in the hole push it down gently and it's back in go around the rim of this with your finger and hopefully there's no chemicals on your finger get that back down um, Spring, where did I put the spring? Springs here. All right, and then there's see that little uh, that little knob inside. There's a little knob inside that goes inside the spring. And push it down. That's it. And then all I'm doing, I'm just holding it down level because the spring is going to try to push it up while I screw these in. Let me get it lined up. And I have the one screw on, I'm still going to hold it down while I put this other screw in. No, these are plastic. You don't. You definitely don't want to over tighten these. Um, you just want to get it just a little bit snug, so it doesn't have to be crazy tight. Since it's plastic, you, you can crack off the uh, the side of the diaphragm. You don't want to do that. That would be really bad. Just like that. like that. Now what you want to do is make sure these uh, here I can turn it. You want to make sure these diaphragms go up or the slide diaphragms go up with about the same amount of resistance. You can move it with your finger but so that you can see it better. I'm just going to do it with a screwdriver but push up the diaphragm and feel how much resistance it's, it's pushing down that'll let you know if, uh, how freely the slides moving and uh, if the diaphragm is sealed in place. I'm mainly doing this because of this one that wasn't really sealing in place very well underneath that cap so like I said just push it up and try to feel how easy it's going up do it with your finger don't do it with a screwdriver I'm doing it so you can see it like I said just push this one up that way you can feel it should go up smooth with uh, no resistance. Older diaphragms will have like a crease in the middle so you'll you'll feel it go up and then it'll slip and go up some more when you're going down. It's like you're, there's a weak spot. Yeah, you'll feel a weak spot. But these should be good. They feel good.
that one drops faster than this one. So I've got to inspect that a little bit more and see why this one's dropping faster than this one. But um, that's not a normal thing to happen. It might be that the diaphragm is just out of place a little bit. Um, yeah, but that's it. That's it for the video. Um, subscribe. I plan on doing more carburetors, at least making videos of more carburetors as I do them. So, there, uh, yeah. Um, check for updated videos, new videos. Carburetors are pretty easy. Most people can do them. You just got to be careful, have patience. And, yeah, but that's it. Thanks.